Okay, welcome back, model building fans. It's Brian, and it is time for the small scale group build. And we have our selection of kits here that we're going to choose from for our small scale group build this year. And all through the year, I've been collecting new things, and I've been like, you know what, this might be a good candidate, that might be a good candidate. Matter of fact, we just got these two guys right here. Uh, from NNL West, I, f I failed to show those in the uh, the video because they're so small, I lost track of them. But I had these guys here, I thought, those are cool. Um, I've got these guys here, these old 1900s cars. These are really slick. Um, I've got this guy here, this Porsche 917. I did that the first year. So I want to, I think I'm going to stay away from that dude because I, I did a nice, I did two 917s. I did a 917 and 917K, first year, second year of the build. Um, I've also been looking at this little dude here, this little uh, Escort. I thought that was really cool. Uh, I got this cord kit here from Minicraft. This is an old Minicraft. I've looked inside that kit, and every time I do, I'm like, mm, yeah, that can wait. <laughs> that can wait. And then we got these guys. These guys look like these little cereal boxes from back in the day. You know, when we would go camping, we'd take these little cereal boxes. But uh, I've got this tiny little Jaguar XKE. And I'm like, yeah, 143rd scale. Dinky little dude. Okay, now, you want to play a game? What color is it molded in? Let's take a look. And if you guessed yellow, you are correct. Wow. <laughs> that's a, that's definitely a color. Uh, this dude here, this is a cute little guy. The Vet Show Rod. So this is a little bit different than a Stingray. Kind of cool looking guy. I don't know. Um, haven't opened it. I, I don't know. I don't think the shrink wrap is obviously original. Somebody sealed it up. So hopefully that's actually okay in there. But uh, I don't know about that one either. These guys we just got, uh, they're kind of interesting. They're actually motorized. They have wind-up motors in them. And um, this one, the decals don't exist in the kit. So I'm not quite sure what to do about that. I do like that martini livery. I'm a big fan of that. So we'll have to buy decals. And it probably take too long for those to come in for that. So we got this guy. I love 928s. I just think they're really cool looking. Um, so this is definitely a front runner. And this is, again... This is a weird scale. Look at this, 138 scale. That's an interesting one. Just got this guy we showed in the video the other day. And um, I do want to do this one. I do want to do this one, but my buddy Mars is also, I think he's working on one too. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, so over here, like we already said, the 917, we did, we did that first two years. So we're going to set him aside and uh re revisit him later on because i want to do i did a golf livery the first time and then we did uh the laramie cigarette thing or whatever it's called and then uh and then we want to do i think we want to do a martini racing on this guy so we're not you know we need to get some decals for that so let's see here got down to these two three i should say so we got an airfix kit here 1912 model t uh pretty cool looking um this one's sporting a right hand drive I need to look that up. I don't, I'm not 100% sure that's that's correct. I can't remember if they did right-hand drive cars back in the day. Or, you know, the Ford is uh, the right direction, so it's not like a flipped image. So, I don't know. Maybe they did that. Maybe they they, they, they used to drive on the uh, the wrong side of the road and then changed their minds at some point. Or maybe it was a Henry Ford thing where he felt that the should be on that side of the car. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, this is definitely front-runner for me. I also like this pyro kit. This is a 1909 Cadillac 30 touring car. And um, I've, I've looked this up. And the reason why they call it the 30 was because that was how much horsepower it had. <laughs> 30 horsepower. But uh, I think for back in 1909, that was a hot car. Uh, I do, I do kind of like this kit here. It is kind of an involved kit, so that's kind of cool. I think the uh, the Airfix kit is a little bit more simplified. And then we also have this vintage brash car. This is a, a Renault from 1906. And I do like this hood on that. That's just really cool. So I think, actually, it's, it's between these two guys here. And let's see. Should we flip a coin? Let's flip a coin. Let's get, a, let's get ourselves a coin. Okay. Here. Here's a coin. That's heads. That's not. All right. So, this is heads, that's tails. Ready? It came up heads! We're going to do the pyro. All right, the pyro kit. We're going to do the Renault. So there we go. Let's take a look inside. What do you know about the Renault? Not a thing. Not a thing. Oh, molded in red. Happy, happy joy. 
Uh, let's see, 1906 Runabout, uh, Renault Racer, Vintage Brass Car Series. You know, I think, I think Treeline, I think Jeff Trees over Treeline uh, Models did did a Renault. I can't recall if he did one of these or not. I, I know he did a Pyro Kit, but I don't know if he did this exact one. But uh, that's um, it's pretty straightforward right there, right? Everything's on one page. Do all of this, and then you're done. So there we go. Oh, there's a there's actually an engine. Oh, we actually get to build an engine. Oh, happy joy. Okay, cool. Uh, so here's their... Uh, oh, for just 60 cents each, you can get one of these. There's their collected all sh uh, sheet there. And then over here, we have tabletop series. 132nd scale stock cars, $1. twenty-five each. Wow. Okay. That... That's going to the museum. Uh, Pyro Park, Union, New Jersey. Hmm. I didn't know Pyro was such a heavy hitter back in the day. I don't even have a date on this. 1968. There it is. Right there. Right there. 1968. So that's uh, well before me. And probably a lot of you guys out there. But here's here's their brass. That looks kind of cool. I like that. It's got some good sheen to it for being from the 1960s. Uh, let's see. Here's some transparent pieces in a transparent bag. That's handy. Um... You know what would be funny is to take this this car here and redo it to look like the time machine from the movie Time Machine from back in the 60s with Rod Taylor. Yeah, that's one of my favorite sci-fi movies. Uh, let's see here. Wheels. Wheels and uh, rims. And do we have tires? Oh, we actually have what passes for tires. And they're squishy, so they're not, they're not going to chip or break on us. Uh, there's the top, obviously. Here's the seat. Apparently, it's a stadium-style seating where you get the two. That would be the rear end, I, I suspect. Yep, okay. There's that really cool-looking hood. I like that bread box style hood. And then that would be the, the back end there, I, I expect. And, uh, yeah, that is... <laughs> that's pretty cool. Okay, what's this say here? Oh, it's actually stamped on the inside, 1967. Huh, how about that? All right, so that's going to be our choice. We're going to get started on this guy here and uh, follow along for updates on this. We'll be also working on other things on the bench as well. Um, we do want to apologize to the community for not being on top of this particular kit here because uh, um, we've been so busy with other things that we didn't do advertisements for this and stuff. But all of you guys know we do this every year. We, we like to partner with Sean on this. He's a great guy. And a really good friend, and um, he's been shouldering most of the uh, the uh, the weight for this particular group build this year. So, thank you, Sean, to for that. All right, let's get this mess cleaned up, and we'll get started, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Wonder why this has this cut out here? Huh? That's interesting. It's on both sides. They did stuff a little differently in the '60s.